Following the IDF's announcement of troop withdrawal from Gaza, many are wondering if a Rafah operation to eliminate the remaining Hamas battalions is still on the table. Here to speak with us about the situation is Lieutenant Colonel Maurice Hirsch, the former lead prosecutor for the IDF. Lieutenant Colonel Hirsch, thank you for joining us as always. Can you share with us your take? Can you share with us your take on what the IDF's plan is here? Is this a response to international pressure? Is it a strategic plan that was in place before? What, what is going on? So I would like to say that it's obvious and clear to everyone what's going on, but I don't think that is necessarily the case. I think that what we've seen at the moment is most of the IDF forces pulling out of the Gaza Strip, at least for the coming uh, um, period of time. It's not very clear as to when that new operation will take place, or if indeed it will take place at all. Prime Minister Netanyahu has committed himself to carrying out the operation, to really getting rid of and destroying all of Hamas, going into Rafah, so has Minister Gallant. So we can only really rely on their commitment to say that even after a certain period of time, it's hard to say exactly how long that be, will we wait until after Idil Fita? Um, coming up in, in, in the next few days, will we wait for another six weeks for a hostage deal um, to, to, to come to fruition? It's not clear exactly when we will go in, but we would like to believe, I think the Israeli public would like to see Hamas destroyed in general and totally um, for fear of it regaining control of the Gaza Strip and doing what it had promised to do and carry out the October 7 massacre again and again and again and again. Now, how does the IDF know that Hamas won't just return to the areas that they've just withdrawn from? How do we know that the IDF is making progress? You mentioned what if there is, you know, a potential six-week pause or some sort of hostage deal. Why would that not risk uh, the, the progress in this war for the IDF? I think that, uh, um, that Hamas also has to take into account that the IDF and uh, its leaders and commanders aren't stupid. And whilst we pulled out or seem to have pulled out of the northern Gaza Strip, we seem to have pulled out of the Al Shifa hospital, they then took that as a sign that they could return um, almost with impunity. And that very quickly exploded in their faces. Um, I think that they have to understand that even though the IDF forces are temporarily retreating, that there are, I think, some uh, um, more open, more clear um, surprises for them and some, uh, some surprises which they'll meet in the near future, um, not being able to, to, to tell exactly when that will happen. Now, can the IDF, without a Rafa operation, be victorious? I mean, they've mentioned more strategic ways to, to fight Hamas. What, what are these more strategic ways? And, and if we have them, why weren't they used before? Let it be clear, there's no way to win this war without destroying Hamas, not in any way, shape or form not without the destruction of Hamas and not without the return of all of the hostages, which is why I believe that this is a war that will go on for a very long time. Hamas has no intention of releasing the hostages. It will possibly release some of the hostages in, in the coming days, in the coming weeks, as part of a grandiose deal. But it is not going to release all of the hostages because they know that that is, Sinwar knows, that the hostages are his personal insurance policy. And all Hamas wants to do is see the end of the war with Yehir Sinwar capable of coming above ground and saying, we've won. That's all they need. They don't care how many Palestinians were killed. They don't care how much destruction, destruction there was in the Gaza Strip. That's the only victory picture that they're looking for. And anything short of destroying Hamas, killing Sinwar and that top leadership of the Hamas and releasing all of the hostages, will be seen as a loss in this war for Israel. And that's not something that we can really tolerate. Now, if the IDF is victorious, if there is a complete elimination of Hamas, what does that mean for the rest of the terrorist proxies of the Islamic Republic that Israel is facing off against now on the northern border, even the Houthis in Yemen? Is the war really over with the defeat of Hamas? Well, I think we're going to continue seeing the, the actions and the terrorist actions of the Iranian proxies. The Iranians have no desire whatsoever to allow the situation to calm down. The opposite would be true after the, the assassination of their general last week, um, specifically. And in the wider context, even as 
the Americans as the U.S. administration discusses this greater deal to include Saudi Arabia and to bring it into the Abraham Accords, let's just remember that discussion was on the table prior to October 7, and it could well have been one of the incentives for the terrorists, for Iran, to launch the war in order to derail um, those discussions. So having that again on the table will, I think, incentivize the Iranians even more to operate their, their, their proxies from all of the different sides, whether it be from the south, from the north, from the militias in Syria, um, and even potentially with terror attacks abroad in order to undermine the situation, in order to undermine that broadening of the Abraham Accords to include Saudi Arabia. So I think that that's something that we need to take into account as we uh, discuss this uh, um, wider picture of a deal with Hamas that may include some type of incentives. Um, I think it's something which we should uh, uh, view with much caution. Well, we are out of time, but I want to thank you so much for joining us uh, with your insights. Thank you, Maurice Hirsch. Thank you for joining us.